Hello everyone, this is Wiley. I'm here. In today's video, we're going to be doing a quick start guide on the XT200. So here in front of you is everything that you need in order to assemble it together and then we can quickly go through how to actually use the XT200. Obviously, you need the camera body and the lens and then you need a battery. You definitely want to charge this battery before going through and start setting up your camera. So definitely put it into the camera body and with most of these new camera bodies, you're going to be charging it through your USB-C port right over here. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is the SD cards and we do want to spend a few minutes talking about this because it is very important. A lot of people just reuse their old SD cards but for a lot of these new cameras you do want to get new SD cards and these are kind of the newest versions of the SD cards. If I had money to spare I would definitely recommend buying the SDXC version, which is the latest version, the latest format. It starts at 64 gigabytes. And what you're looking for is a V90, which will allow you to do the 300 megabytes read and write. So these are really nice cards, but they are also very expensive. Now, if you don't want to spend as much, you can grab the 32 gigabyte version, which is the SDHC version. So this is the previous generation's SD cards. And most likely what you want to do is you want to grab the 32 gigabyte version and again you're looking for that 300 megabytes read and write a lot of the really good video features is going to require very fast sd cards and also in general in order to clear your buffer when you're taking a lot of pictures all at once you really do want a very fast sd card transfer so these new cards will allow for that so now that we're done talking about all of the components let's go ahead and put the camera together so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install the lens so what you want to do on the camera body right here you want to rotate this counter clockwise and this will reveal the sensor and with these type of caps all you need to do is pull up and they show the camera lens so what you want to do is you want to line up this red dot with the red dot over here on the camera body so lining up the two red dots and then you want to rotate clockwise until you hear the click and now your camera lens is installed once your camera lens is installed you want to go ahead to the bottom of your camera and what you want to do so you want to go ahead, open up the tab. You want to take your battery. And what you want to do is you want to line up this orange tab with the orange dot. So go ahead, push it in, and you should see it nicely firmly seated. And then you just want to take your one of your SD cards. You want the label facing forward. So go ahead, insert it. Go ahead and close. And your camera is good to go. Now that we have the camera set up, we can easily turn on the camera with the button up top here. And then once it turns on, the first screen that's going to get displayed is what language you want to select. So I'm going to select English for myself. Now I have worked with this camera before, so it's not going to show me the second menu screen. The second menu screen, when you first start it up for the first time, will ask you if you want to sync it with your smartphone. You can go ahead and do it, but I don't find it very reliable. So it's not something that I really teach. But if you do do that, then you won't have to set up the time. And it'll also allow you to possibly download the firmware and upgrade your firmware that way. What I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shut off the camera and I'm going to show you how you can check the firmware on your camera. So what you want to do is you want to push the back display button and then you want to hit the power button again. And what that does is it'll bring you to this menu screen which shows you the firmware version of your body and also your lens. So go ahead and check on the Fujifilm website whether or not this is the latest firmware for your camera and also for your lens. If it isn't, then you definitely want to upgrade it because you always want the latest generation on your cameras. So we're going to go ahead and check the firmware for the camera. So I'm going to select camera on the Fujifilm website. And then I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to what the Fuji X-T200 is. Of course, all of the other cameras are on here, but it looks like we're on version 1.10. So that is a new firmware version. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download it. Uh, it's down here. I agree. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the download button. And as you can see down here, it's downloading the firmware for me. So I'm just going to wait for that to finish. And then I'm going to go ahead and check the lens version as well. All right, now that we have the camera firmware version downloaded, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check the lens itself. And we're going to be looking for the 15 to 45. So here is the 15 to 45 and we're on version 1.03. I think that is a more up-to-date version. So again, we're going to go ahead and download it. 
Now this version, it looks like it comes in a zip file. So if we open this up, we're going to see two of them. So now that we have three firmware files to work with, we're gonna go ahead, download this to the SD card, and then we're going to insert it back into the camera. All right, now that we have the SD card back into the camera, we're gonna go ahead, push the display button and hit the power again. Let the camera turn on. And what you're seeing is that we're back on the same screen again. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna push okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the camera body. We're gonna go from version one to 1.11. So gonna select okay and okay again. And then we're gonna go ahead and let this firmware update. So now that the firmware has been updated, we're gonna go ahead and power off. And then we're gonna hit the display again because we're gonna update the lens. So as you can see, the body is now updated. We're gonna hit okay. We're gonna select the lens and then we're gonna go ahead and update that version, hit okay. And then we're just gonna let it do its thing. All right, now that the firmware has been updated, we're gonna once again, turn off our camera, turn it back on. And we're not going to hit the display button again because we do want the camera working. So as you can see, it is showing the camera. I went ahead and just put a camera bag as a prop just so that we have something to focus in on. And then now you should be able to start taking pictures. Uh, let me show you what the shutter button is just so that you know. So this right here is the shutter button. If you select it, you hear that beep. That beep says that it's actually focusing in on something. And if you push it all the way down, it'll go ahead and take the picture. Right now, what we have is we're in P mode. So this is the program mode. It's the easiest mode to go ahead and start in. So we're going to go ahead, start the introduction with this mode. And we're going to talk about all of the dials and buttons for this particular mode. So I'm going to go ahead, bring it back down. It's very easy to go ahead and move the focus with this box around. You can also do a touch. If you select inward on this button knob, it just does a punch in focus so that you can actually see whether or not this part of this part of the image is actually in focus. Now, if you go ahead and you actually have something in focus, and if you want to go ahead and move the focus again, you can press this button right here and it'll get you out of focus. So out of focus. Now, if you select this button, you can also use it to focus. So if you have a spot that you want to focus, you can go ahead and push this button and it'll focus it for you. Or of course, you can go ahead and hit the shutter button and it'll focus it. And if you push down, it'll actually take a picture. So if you hit the menu button, what I want to do is I want to go to AFMF and what I want to go is into the focus mode. So if you come in here, you'll have AF single, zone, wide tracking, and all. So single focus, that's what we've been using this whole time. So you get this nice little box that you can touch and then get focus and then you can take a picture. But you can also go into what we call a zone mode. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a much bigger box and it's gonna show you what's going to be in focus. So as you move around, you can just get different things in focus. This is very useful in uh, when you use it in conjunction with continuous autofocus because it allows you to track something with a bigger box. So sometimes that's very useful. You can go to wide tracking. If you go to wide tracking, it pretty much just looks at the entire screen and it's gonna determine what it wants to focus in on. This is a mode that sometimes is useful, but most of the time I don't really find it very useful because the camera is determining what's gonna focus in on. So if you have multiple objects on the screen, it might wanna you know, focus in on one rather than the other, and you're really the one that wants to figure that out. So I don't really particularly find this mode very useful. And the last one to talk about is the all mode, which I don't really use, to be honest with you. The reason why I say this is because in order to use all mode very effectively, what you need to do is you actually need to change some settings. By default right now, it goes into area focus, which I've already talked about. But in order for you to actually change or cycle into a different mode, you have to go into the menu system. You have to go to focus area. And then when you switch this knob up top, what it allows you to do is it allows you to cycle through all of the different focus modes. So it can go into wide, it can go into zone, which is a large zone, and then you can go into single focus. So this is what all means. It just allows you to cycle through all of the different focus modes. But what you have to do is you have to be in this menu in order to actually use it. But the only way to get in there right now is to go to the focus area in the menu system, which can be a bit annoying because there's no way to do that. There is a way around it, which I will go ahead and show you, which is when you hit the menu button, 
you can actually go into the wrench or the setup menu. You can go into buttons and dials. And in here on the first one, the focus lever settings, if you were to switch it to on, what it'll do, uh, instead of letting you punch in focus with this knob now, what it allows you to do is it allows you to go into the focus area in which you can immediately change to different types of focus modes. So this is probably the best way to use all focus is to actually go ahead and change what this knob does when you push in on it. Generally speaking, I will almost always go back to the single focus mode. You can go ahead and hit the display, which will cycle through all the different displays. So select whichever one that you want. Uh, the menu button will go ahead and bring you into the menu screen. We won't talk about that just yet. The play button over here will let you see the pictures you've already taken. Again, you can hit the half shutter button to come back out. And then this button, this is the drive button. Once you're in here, you can select many different types of modes. So there's single shot, there's multi shot, and then there is a bunch of different bracketing modes that you can go into, but we won't get into that just yet. Just know that this is your drive dial if you want to get into many different modes. So the next thing we're going to talk about are these dials up top. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to lean it a little bit so that you can kind of see the dials up top while being able to see some of the screen. It, this right here is the exposure compensation. So if you twist it, you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, the screen will get darker or it can get brighter. So you're basically, uh, you're basically allowing the camera to get more light without having to go into any type of manual modes. And then once you have something that you like, you can go ahead and take the picture. This dial right here controls the aperture of your lens, so it controls how much light is coming in. It also controls how much background blur that you're gonna get. The lower the number, the more background blur you're gonna get, and the less and the more and the more light that's going to be coming through the lens. And I'll show you where it's shown in the display. So if you notice this number right here, this is your f-stop. This is also your aperture. As you move this to the left, you can see the number go up. And if you move this to the right, the number goes down. So this determines your aperture in program mode and most likely in many other modes. Going back to the top again, this of course controls all the different other types of modes for your camera. For this basic startup, I'm not gonna go ahead and touch that. What we're going to talk about next is this dial right here. So if I bring it back down and I go ahead and change this, what you'll notice is it's actually going through all the picture profiles or as Fujifilms calls it, all the different film simulations. And this is one of the best ones that I've actually seen implemented in the camera because it shows you a before and after. So this is what we're currently in and you can go ahead, go through all of the different dials and see the type of picture profiles and see all of the types of colorations that you can get through all of these picture profiles, which makes it really useful. I wish all cameras would actually do it this way because it just makes things so much easier to deal with. But there is a lot of good picture profile film simulations on the Fujifilm cameras. So definitely take the time to actually go through them, take a few pictures of each and see which one you really like because there's going to be some that are gonna be better for different types of situations. So the last button to talk about up top and and it'll be very quick is this button right here. So this will allow you to go ahead and start a video recording. Really haven't talked about video recording on this camera yet, but I'll just go ahead and show it to you. So if you select this button right here and you kind of have to push and hold, it'll go ahead and start recording. It's going to be in full HD and it can record 30 minutes. Full HD is the default. If you want to go to 4K, you're definitely going to have to select 4K. So just something to note. Uh, now, if you go ahead and push and hold again, it'll go ahead and stop the recording. So I almost forgot there is one last switch is right over here. And what this does is if you push it backwards, it releases your flash. So there is a flash on this camera. You can go ahead and close it up. But if you do want to use the flash, you can go ahead and release it. There's also an auto mode in this camera system in which it'll go ahead and pop up the flash if it thinks it needs it. But by default, that is off. So this doesn't come up unless you actually hit that switch. Now let's go ahead and go back to this button right here. So if we select it again, it changes the menu system on the back of the screen. And I do want to go through this because this is basically like a quick menu, but you can actually see what your subject is. So if you go ahead and select this button right here, this is your exposure compensation, which is this dial up top. So you go ahead and slide it up and down to change the exposure. I'm just going to go ahead and put it back to the center again. 
go ahead hit this button to go back this button right here changes your depth of field so this is your aperture so you can go ahead and change how much light is coming through i'm going to go ahead and move it back we change this one this one shows you the aspect ratios that were uh, that you can actually shoot with so you can go ahead and just select through all of the different ones that you want to use i'm going to go ahead and of course use the full sensor so that's the 16 by 9. this over here will actually let you change the different type of focus modes. So it allows you to actually touch, but in this mode, it won't focus. So I'm gonna go back in. So that was just area. It can be off, so you can't actually use it. Whoops. And it could be a shot. So once it actually gets focus, it's gonna take a picture. Uh, I don't use this mode very often, or you can go back to default, which is when you touch, you're gonna go ahead and get a locked focus, and then you can take the picture. This over here controls your white balance, so you can choose different types of white balance. Uh, most of the time I keep it in auto, unless I'm actually specifically setting up a specific shot, I might actually change the white balance. This right here is the film simulation, so this is this dial over here. You're gonna just use the touch screen instead. In fact, you can still use this button over here to actually use the film simulation. And the last one right here will let you go between manual focus, autofocus single and autofocus continuous. So if you wanna go through your different types of autofocus modes, you can use this button right here. And the Q button will actually bring you into the quick menu screen in which you can change all of these things. But because it actually has all of these buttons here, it kind of blocks what you're seeing in the background. But most of this stuff right here is actually in these button modes right here. So again, very useful. The question of course will allow will tell you what each one of these are. I should, probably should have just started with that one because it shows you exactly what they mean. So if you're used to using a smartphone, you might actually prefer this menu system. The only problem with it is that you always have to keep pushing this button and actually go back. There's no way to default to that just manually because it would be kind of nice if you like that, you don't have to keep constantly hitting this button because when you do take a picture, it does go away. So that is all of the buttons on the X-T200. On the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and dive through the whole menu system and show you some really interesting things that you're gonna to wanna to turn on to really help you use the full capabilities of this camera. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I hope this video was helpful to you and I'll see you in the next video.